Hey team heads, this is Don from Mainleaf. In this video, I'm going to be clearing up the often misunderstood term, first flush tea. And then I'm going to be tasting two first flush 2020 green teas, but one of them is very different from the other. So no doubt in your tea buying journeys, you have heard the terms first flush, second flush, third flush. But what does this actually mean? Because I actually think that it's a little bit confusing. So flush essentially refers to when the tea was picked. First flush being the earliest pickings, obviously as you get later they become second flush and third flush. Now we consider the time that the leaf is picked as to be a very important bit of information for you to make buying decisions. Now by no means definitive as as we know, there's nothing definitive in the tea world, but it's an important bit of information for you. And the reason for that is that there are certain seasons where certain teas really, really thrive. Now, for the vast majority of teas out there, spring is king. And there's a few reasons for that. The first reason is that the conditions at springtime are perfect optimal for tea growing. They are warm enough and sunny enough that you're getting enough energy, nutrition from the sun, and you are getting you know, enough warmth for the plant to just start to grow, but it's still cool enough, especially at night, for that growth to be just um, you know, held back a little bit. A little bit of, of the breaks are put on that growing, and that means that you are gonna get richer tea because slower growing tea means that every single leaf is allowed a little bit more time to build up nutrition, aroma, and flavor. The second reason is that because it's springtime, there are less insects about, and therefore you're less likely to find teas that have been sprayed with pesticides. The third reason, especially for early spring picked teas, is that those pickings will benefit from the nutrition and all of those compounds which contribute to great tea, which have been built up in the plant over the winter dormancy period. So over winter, whilst the leaves and buds are not growing, the plant is basically building up nutrition, surviving, just surviving that winter and building up nutrition from the soil. And those first growths of very early spring will benefit from that. It will have that extra bit of nutrition. Obviously, as you start to pick, then the next uh, flushes, and this is why it's confusing, but the next time that the, pl the plant uh, produces more buds and leaves, there'll be incrementally less and less of those nutritional elements that have been built up during the winter dormancy period. Of course, they'll still be sucking up nutrition from the soil, so it'll still be you know, giving some nutrition and some of that richness to the tea, but it's not gonna be quite the same as with your very early spring picked teas. And this is really the key here, because for many people, there's a confusion between first flush and first pluck tea. The reason why there's that confusion is, as I just said, the terminology that's used when a plant produces buds, when it's producing its, uh, its, its growths, that is called a flush. And there is nothing more beautiful in the world than visiting tea country during the time when the flush starts to come in early, early spring. All of the bushes start to, to take on this beautiful lime green frosting over these darker green plants. And so every time the plant produces new buds, that is called a flush. And so you would have thought that first flush means the first growths of the year, but it doesn't really mean that. Now, the term first flush, second flush, third flush really belongs to descriptions for subcontinent teas like Indian teas, Darjeeling's especially. And um, what they refer to is a season of picking. So when you pick a tea plant, Whatever your picking protocol, it might be buds, it might be buds and leaves. Once you've picked it, in about two weeks to 10, 10 days to two weeks, depends on the plant, depends on the cultivar, depends on the area, depends on the weather, it will flush again. It will produce a new bud. And so during the season, the spring season, you can get many pickings. So you can get many pickings from the season, which might start in sort of early March all the way to May. That's sort of considered to be spring season. And you can get many pickings, multiple pickings throughout that season. But my understanding is that all of them can be termed first flush tea. In other words, the flush is not referring to the individual growths, but referring to the season. So with Darjeeling's, you have first flush, which is sort of March to May. 
Then you have second flush, which is during the summer. And then you have um, third flush, which is during the autumn. And you've got like mini flushes in between. So you've got monsoon flush and you've got in between flush. So they generally split the picking year into three main flushes with a couple of little small ones in between. And therefore first flush cannot only refer to the first pluckings of the year. Now in China, they have a very different way of uh, referring to the season at which uh, tea was picked. First of all, for the majority of high quality green teas and the majority of high quality teas in general, there tends to be only one or two picking seasons. For some teas, they'll pick in springtime and in autumn. And sometimes there can be some really good autumn uh, teas. And for a lot of teas, the one and only season for picking is springtime, the spring picking season. And then they will manage the plants and allow them to go dormant over winter and then they'll return over spring. But during that springtime, they will pick many times. And so what they'll do is divide the sort of spring season into a few parts, especially for green tea. So you've probably heard of pre Qingming tea. So pre Qingming tea, both of these are pre Qingming tea, means any tea which is picked before the Qingming festival, which is usually around the fourth of April. After that, you've got what is called pre-rain tea, which is any tea which is picked between Qingming, 4th of April, and the 20th of April. And then after that, you have what is known as after rain season. And that means anything that's picked sort of from the 20th of April until the end of the spring season, which usually is around May time. And what I have in front of me here are two Anjibai Cha, two jade sword teas, one of the most highly revered and highest priced ticket teas out there. If you've not seen our video all about Angie Bai Cha when we were visiting last year in Angie County, then go check out that video. I'll put a link in the description below and you can see these teas being made. Both of them are technically first flush because they're both spring pickings, but one of them is also first pluck which means it was the first actual pluckings of the year. And we have just got this tea in. Small batch, that's in stock, it's called Angie Bai Cha Supreme or Jade Sword Supreme. I'm gonna let you guess which one of these is first pluck versus simply first flush spring tea. Now, both of these are pre Qing Ming. So you're gonna see that within first flush, even within the first part of the season, so both pre Qing Ming, you're gonna get different varieties. And let me say from the outset that both of these teas are pinnacle teas, both delicious, incredible Angie Bai Cha. But I hope that you can see that there is a difference. So let's take a look at them. This one here, the color difference is clearly darker. So slightly darker than this. These are lighter, a little bit more yellowed, a little bit more golden. These, these have a bit more greens in them. Also, you can see that the actual, you know, pickings themselves are a little bit uh, coarser. So you've got a bud and two leaves, some bud and one leaf. Whereas here, you've got mostly bud and a single leaf. So you're gonna see when we, uh, when we brew them, they'll open up. There'll be some bud and two leaves, but the leaves will be a lot finer. So clearly I'm not gonna, you know, I'm gonna put you out of your suspense. <laughs> not that there was any, this is clearly the first pluck tea versus this one here. So this one is lighter, it's more delicate, it's smaller. There is the same amount of tea here, 4.5 grams. I'm treating myself today, 4.5 grams. And you can see that visually this one looks like lower volume. Lower volume means higher density. So therefore you're, you're starting to get a feel that this one is just more dense and therefore probably more nutrition packed, more aroma and flavor packed than this one. Again, please let me just stress, both of these are pinnacle grade teas. It's like picking diamonds from diamonds, right? But you can see the difference here. And that's what's always so fascinating about teas. Just no matter how deep you go, there's always another layer to peel back. Okay, so we've got first plug Angie Bai Cha and first flush pre Ching Ming Angie Bai Cha. They're both pre Ching Ming. This one was picked on the 14th of March. This one was picked on the 27th of March. So about two weeks difference. So you can see the difference that it makes. And obviously with the first uh, pluckings of the year, they're going to be super fine with their pickings because they know that it commands a very, very high price. Other than that, the teas are the same, both Angie Bai Chas from Angie County. 
let's warm up this teaware and let's taste the difference because there is a substantial price difference between these two. And so the question is, as always, is the price difference worth it? And the only way that you can judge that is through the sensorial experience. There's no point getting sucked into all of the snob value aspects of it. And if you watch the video I did about Angie Bai Cha, go check out that video. If you watched it, then you'll see that that's sort of a battle that I always have with this tea is, you know, making sure that I find the tea which, which expresses the beauty of this tea, but without going too far in terms of the snob price tag, or at least if there is a high price tag, it is worth it. And uh, spoiler alert, this is worth it. Um, okay. And if you tried our uh, Jade Sword Supreme last year, then uh, I hope you would agree with that. Right, let's have a smell already the beautiful aromas, springtime aromas coming out from these guy ones. Let's go with, we'll call this just one Pre Ching Ming and we'll call that one First Pluck, okay? This one is Pre Ching Ming too, but just so that we, uh, we have clarity in terms of the differences that I'm describing. So I'm getting edamame, uh, soybean, green soybean. I'm getting a little bit of creaminess, a little bit of um, a nut milk aromatic. I'm getting this sort of pungent, pungent note. Um, and that is that very bright, bracing green. I wouldn't say cut grass. Often, you know, the term cut grass is used far too much when describing green teas. And I don't think it's accurate because cut grass is a very particular smell. It's, it's, it's more settled than that. Um, it's a little bit more savory than that. It's sort of like the smell of um, spinach leaf rather than cut grass. Right, let's see how that differs from this first pluck tea. Oh. Oh, smoother, creamier, mellower. Oh, the edamame is there, but I'm also getting sort of cooked. No, I'm getting sort of, I was going to say cooked courgettes of zucchini, but it's also this ultra sweet sort of candied, candied nuts, like, um, you know, peanuts that have been coated in, in candy, candied sugar. It's super, super sweet. Less of that spinachy note. Yeah, candied nuts. Wow, caramelized candied nuts. A little bit of edamame, a bit of uh, green, um, maybe sort of um, sweet green chestnuts. Okay, we're gonna give this a rinse. Very quick rinse. And then I'm gonna put the temperature up. Put these to the side. And we're gonna brew for about 20 seconds here. But as always, I'm gonna do it by feel. And I'm gonna not brew them simultaneously because I really wanna try and get that feel right. One of the most beautiful teas out there, Jade Sword. One of the most beautiful teas. Um, it's sort of a, it's a real looker. And that means that you know, you can charge a pretty price for it. Even if it's not particularly tasty, you can get a lot of Jade Sword, which looks spectacular, but is not really uh, expressing what I would like to find in Angie Bai Cha. Four grams here, no, 4.5 grams, sorry, 4.5 grams. Oh, look how beautiful that is. I'm gonna close it briefly, but look how beautiful and golden the look of that one is and we'll see if we can get it relatively similar okay so we're immediately seeing a difference in the color of the liquor I'll bring this closer to you so you can see here we go So, first pluck versus 
Oof, actually, having said that, I actually can't see that much difference. This one looks a little bit lighter to me, but I'm surprised that I don't see more difference considering you see the difference in the look of the leaves. This one looks a tiny bit clearer and it looks like it's got a tiny bit more activity going on. But as always, the proof of the pudding is in the tasting. You can take a look at these leaves while I serve myself. It's a great time of year and the spring harvests are coming in. So I'm speaking to you from the beginning of April. We've just passed Qingming. So it is uh, clearly now all the pickings that are happening now are going to be what is known as pre-rain. Yeah, there is a slight difference in color. You can see, let me just put these to the side and show you. I'm gonna smell these leaves. Yeah, it has a, it has this sort of uh, um, very penetrating, bright note coming through. Cooked spinach, but but it's more than that. It's like cooked spinach, maybe with a bit of uh, lemon juice on it. Let's have a smell of this one here. Oh, very very different. So I'm getting uh, the, those green soybeans. I'm getting a savory note coming through, like um a vegetable consomme, very bright, very springtime consomme, like green peas, green beans, snow peas, marge to that um, note. I'm also getting a bit more floral, um, um, light floral, sweet white floral flowers, maybe a little bit magnolia, but very, very light. And the sweetness is really what comes to the fore. Again, like those candied nuts, but now we're moving more into candy floss. And um, yeah, it's just sweet nectar. Okay, cheers everybody. Mm, texture, medium texture, soft to mineral. So it starts off soft, moves to a nice, um, mineral, slightly rocky finish on the sides, a little grip on the tongue. Um, taste, a little bit creamy, but the overriding uh, note here is one of the greenness. But see, the thing about green tea is, ironically, is that you don't want too much green taste in a green tea um, overall. Because um, green usually means sort of uh, raw, unrefined, unprocessed, or processed not, not too well, or, or the pickings. And you know, tea shouldn't taste like grass, right? It shouldn't taste like cut grass green. You want some green, but that green needs to be refined. And this one is. It's a sort of um, the green that is the smell of opening a window in a spring meadow, rather than the green of chewing on a bit of grass. It's got a bit of savory, not too much. And the finish, although this is my, just my second sip, um, is dry to slightly sweet. So I'm getting a nice little bit of zestiness and fruitiness and sweetness out of it. Not a huge amount, but it's there. Right, luxury time. Thick, thick, soft. Syrupy. So soft, so thick, so syrupy. It is luxury in the mouth. Um, taste, much more sweetness. Creamier as well, milkier, nut milks. I'm getting the nuttiness of that edamame. Um, It's, it's creating a lot more juice in my mouth. Very, very juicy. Very, very sweet juiciness. The, the sweetness is sort of a 
is not just a flowery s s uh, sweetness. It's also a little bit fruity, but like very gentle fruitiness, like um, very pale, apple -y fruitiness. You know, those Chinese pears, those nashi pears, that sort of, it's sweet, but just sort of in a, in a, in a vaguely zesty, fruity way, but nothing that's too sort of punchy, aromatic fruit, fruits. So sort of nashi pears or, or very pale golden apples with that edamame and a, like a, a savory tofu nut milk, salted nut milk note to it and moving to a very, very, very sweet finish. Now, the thing about Angie Bai Cha that is one of the best quality markers is longevity. And we could go through infusion after infusion, and I'm sure, 100%, that this one will last longer than this one. Again, both Pinnacle Teas, this one will last probably five, six, seven infusions easily. But this one, in my experience, you can just keep pouring water over it, and it's always just gonna give you some delicious, sweet water taste, even after the 10th infusion, you just have to brew it for longer periods of time. But very, very much, um, uh, um, the case that even though Angie Bai Cha is a very light looking tea and has a relatively light, lighter taste, although again, find yourself a good Angie Bai Cha because there are plenty of Angie Bai Chas out there that look the part. It might even be early spring pickings. Now be very, very careful because a lot of the times, especially with uh, green teas, what's happening, especially in China, is that cultivars and areas are popping up that will make tea be produced or the, the tea plant will flush earlier than normal, than, than traditionally. Um, and so, you know, th this is a marketing trick used um, by many people. If they can get cultivars and they can move the area to a slightly maybe warmer area where they know that the plant is gonna flush earlier, then they can be first to market and can uh, charge a higher price. So you've always got to be careful. That's why I'm saying there's no definitive rules here. You don't want to just look at the date and go, well, it must be a good tea. It doesn't necessarily mean that, but uh, be careful. Just be careful for, that, for those marketing angles. But oftentimes what you get is very good looking Angie Bai Cha that might give you three infusions that are decent, but they are quite weak in taste. And you'll notice that they fall off very, very quickly. They don't persist. They don't have much endurance when you are uh, going through your session. And a lot of people are put off by Angie Bai Cha because of the fact that they pay a pretty price for them and they find that it's a bit of a weak tea or it doesn't give them as much richness as maybe Japanese greens or as potentially maybe Dragon Well does. But really this comes down to finding the right tea. And with Angie Bai Cha, I have to say from my experience, oftentimes you get what you pay for. Oftentimes when you find that pinnacle tea, it tends to be at a pinnacle price as well. Super soft. Now let's go back to the preaching me. So more stony, a little bit more of a jasmine note coming through, a little bit more floral maybe. Um, aromatic, floral, and mineral. This one, soft, syrupy, luxury, nutty, milky, with that slight nashy pear sweetness. So, I hope that this clears up the difference between first flush and first pluck. I hope that you are a little bit more informed about what first flush means. If you see first flush being used to sell a tea, then it should really be for those subcontinent teas. You shouldn't really see it for Chinese teas, Taiwanese, Taiwanese teas, or Japanese teas. Japanese use the term Xincha, which means the, the early spring, the spring season pickings, the new tea. Um, so there's different terminologies for different areas, but you really shouldn't see first flush being used really to describe Chinese teas. And if they do, that simply means spring picked tea and that doesn't really give you any information that's really relevant because all green tea should be spring picked in China. You're really looking for the terminology pre-Ching Ming, pre-rain or after rain. Let's quickly look at these leaves. You can see again the difference in color and you can see how beautiful and plump 
Let me just try and find a couple of representative leaves here. Right, so you can see bud and one leaf here. There are a couple of but there are some bud and two leaves as well. So you can see this is a bud and sort of one and a half leaves. Right, here's a bud and two leaf. So you can see the bud and two leaf, but here you can see that there's larger leaves. Again, very, very nice pickings, but look at that. The incremental difference that two weeks makes in terms of picking between first pluck and a first flush early spring preaching Ming green tea. Anyway, I hope that helps you. Let me know if you've got any other questions in the comments section below. That's it, tea heads. I'm going to enjoy these teas to the full. Don't you worry about that. Check out our other videos. Taste our teas wherever you are in the world by browsing Mayleaf.com and come visit us if you're ever in London. Other than that, thank you for being a part of the revelation of true tea. Stay away from those tea bags. Keep drinking the good stuff and spread the word because nobody deserves bad tea. Bye.